Argentinian transporters lifted the strike that was blocked to the country's food exports after reaching an agreement with the national government. In Russia, President Vladimir Putin confirmed his intention to reorient its energy exports and reduce the use of the dollar and the euro to cope with Western sanctions. The death toll from South Africa's floods climbed to 341 as helicopters fanned out across the southeastern city of Durban searching for survivors. Hi, this is from the South. I am your news anchor, Diego Martin, from the Telsur Studios in Havana. We begin with the news. Argentinian transporters lifted the strike that was blocking the country's food experts after reaching an agreement with the national government. The Federation of Argentinian Transporters lifted the strike it was carrying out to demand an improvement in freight rates and the full supply of diesel. After almost four hours of meeting, an increase of 11 percent in the transport reference rate was agreed upon until March, while for April a total increase of 20 percent was agreed upon and the immediate lifting of the strike as well. Argentina's grain and byproduct carriers strike paralyzed food and byproduct exports for four consecutive days. Former President of Brazil, Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, met with workers and representatives of the main unions in the city of Sao Paulo. During the meeting, workers presented a unified agenda where they proposed, among other issues, a policy for the revaluation of the minimum wage, the application of the basic income program as a social right, and the implementation of strategies to create jobs. The Workers' Party approved this Wednesday the vice presidential candidacy of the former governor of Sao Paulo, Geraldo Alckmin, who will be Lula da Silva's running mate in the October presidential elections. About this, the political organization warned this year's elections are going to be a confrontation between democracy and fascism. They added the latter is represented by supporters of current President Jair Bolsonaro. The biggest picture of a country's sovereignty is the quality of life of its people. It is the quality of wages of the people of that country. How can we talk about sovereignty in a country that is the largest food producer in the world and we have 116 million people with some nutrition problem? How is it possible to talk about sovereignty when there are 19 million people going hungry? How is it possible to talk about sovereignty in a country that is the largest producer of animal protein in the world and people are left looking for chicken carcasses or meat bones in butcher shops to mix at night? Now, former Brazilian President Lula da Silva and the presidential candidate also emphasized that during his government it was demonstrated that the increase in salaries is not the cause of increased inflation. I to tell you that it was thanks to you to the labor unions in a meeting we held in Brazil that we started to increase wages every year. We factored in inflation and gave real salary increases every year according to the GDP growth. In this way, we proved that increasing the minimum wage did not necessarily mean increased inflation. We proved that increasing workers' wages did not cause inflation because wages increased, production increased, wages increased, but also employment grew and the production of consumer goods also grew. That is why we established the inflation target and it was met for the whole time we governed this country. And Vice Presidential Candidate Gerardo Alckmin said thanks to the working class, Brazil has a popular leader such as Lula da Silva. United in this serious moment in which we have a government that hates democracy, a government that admires the torture that makes the people suffer. It is in this moment of unemployment, of empty stomach, of inflation, of hunger, of death, with 662,000 dead, that Brazil is getting stronger. Today, in this historic meeting with the most important trade unions present, I want to tell you that I have come to contribute with my small and humble efforts but with my heart and enthusiasm for the benefit of Brazil. Your struggle, the trade union struggle, gave Brazil the greatest popular leader of this country. Lula, Lula, long live Lula, long live the workers of Brazil.
Bolivia and Chile concluded their pleadings before the International Court of Justice of The Hague for the dispute over the use of the Silala waters. On the previous day, the Bolivian side asked the court to declare the right to the canals on the Silala that are in its territory, the recognition of its sovereignty over the waters, and to carry out maintenance tasks. The Bolivian delegation also demanded that the organism declare the sovereignty of La Paz over the artificial flow of the waters of the Silala and recalled that Chile has not acquired rights over this water flow. On the other hand, on Thursday, Chile is expected to close the second round with its oral arguments to respond to the counterclaims made by Bolivia. Bolivia before the International Court of Justice, Roberto Calzadilla made his statement at the conclusion of the oral argument stage on the status and use of the waters of the Silala. After the 14th concluded the stage of oral arguments in the lawsuit initiated by Chile on the status and use of the waters of Silala. We have clearly, completely, and supported our position full rights over the waters of Silala. Bolivia also has rights over the improved flow products of the canalization that significantly increases the natural flow. Bolivia has the right to decide if it maintains the canalization to deliver this flow under an agreement or dismantle it in order to repair the environmental damage. Ecuador's National Assembly will once again analyze the president's veto of the organic bill that guarantees the interruption of pregnancy for girls, adolescents, and women who are victims. During the meeting, congressmen will have to reach a consensus after the Constitutional Court returned the text with partial objections. The law was sent by the parliament to this judicial instance to determine if it was unconstitutional. After President Guillermo Lasso made 63 observations to the initiative, of which 60 were linked to alleged illegal proposals. The project needs 70 votes in the National Assembly to accept the observations of the executive or 92 to ratify the original project. Among the points that generate more controversy is the maximum time to access abortion in case of pregnancies following rapes. We're going to take a short break now. Please join us again after this. And welcome back to From the South. In Russia, President Vladimir Putin confirmed his intention to reorient its energy exports and reduce the use of the dollar and the euro in order to face Western sanctions. During a meeting with his cabinet in Moscow, Putin indicated that the government must prepare for the possible rejection of fuel and natural gas deliveries by European countries. The head of state declared that the country's energy sector is suffering the consequences of Western sanctions and announced that the banks of the countries that support the sanctions against the nation are delaying payments for Russian supplies. In view of the conflict, the leader warned that the Western intention to replace Moscow in the energy market will affect the global economy and the very countries that participate in the replacement. We need to diversify exports. We will proceed from the fact that in the foreseeable future, the supply of energy resources in the western direction will be reduced. Therefore, it is important to consolidate the trend of recent years, step by step shift the direction of our exports to the fast growing markets of the south and east. Russian, the Russian Defense Ministry revealed a new data on more than 500 U.S. sponsored military biological projects in Ukraine and other countries. The Defense Ministry announced the names of those involved in the implementation of United States military biological programs. Authorities detailed that there are already testimonies about dangerous biological experiments conducted by the United States on patients of hospitals in Kharkiv. At the same time, they indicated that the Technical Scientific Center of Ukraine can create an unfavorable biological environment in Moscow, Europe, the Black Sea, and the Sea of Azov. During the period 2014-2022, the Technical Scientific Center of Ukraine implemented more than 500 projects in such countries as Georgia, Moldova, and Azerbaijan. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov claimed Thursday that restrictions imposed against the ministry's Twitter account were unfounded. 
Twitter blocked the ministry's posts about the deaths of the in the Kiev suburb of Bucha. The Kremlin-backed media had denounced that the published gruesome videos and photos about bodies in Bucha were an elaborate hoax. Unfounded restrictions are being imposed on posts of our ministry, on our overseas agencies on Twitter, just because we tell the truth, because we match our words with facts. Obviously, we can't be forgiven for this. I want to stress that despite such a policy of Western services, we will keep using their opportunities in our information work, strictly within our legislative framework, of course. At the same time, it is obvious we can completely rely only on our domestic online platforms and communication and technological decisions. Lithuania asked the group of seven countries to suspend indefinitely the membership of Russia and Belarus from the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Lithuania stated that the government of that country points out that the suspension would deprive Moscow and Minsk of the opportunity to enjoy special rights on loans from the Monetary Fund. The document also stresses that, although the World Bank has restricted its operations in Russia and Belarus since the beginning of the special operation in Ukraine, it is necessary to impose new restrictions on these two countries. Germany would experience a sharp recession, losing about 220 billion euros in gross domestic product in this and next year if Russia suddenly halts its energy supply to the country, said leading German economic institutes. In case the energy supply from Russia was suddenly cut off, uh, were suddenly cut off Germany's economic growth then this year would be no more than 1.9 percent, with the inflation rate shooting to 7.3 percent, uh, according to the forecast. Germany is the largest buyer of Russian energy among the European Union countries. Before the outbreak of the Russian-Ukrainian conflict, about 50 percent of coal, 35 percent of oil and 55 percent of natural gas consumed in Germany came from Russia. The German government said it plans to stop importing coal and oil from Russia by the end of this year, while gradually reducing imports of natural gas as it strives to reduce dependency on Russian energy. China rejected the unexpected visit of a bipartisanship U.S. congressional delegation to Taiwan. The spokesman of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of China, Zhao Lijian, called on the members of Congress and other politicians of the United States to respect the principle of one China as well as the sovereignty and integrity of the country. Regarding this, authorities of the Asian giant assured that they will take the necessary measures to respond to these meddling actions of the White House, as they put them. On previous occasions, Beijing denounced that Washington is trying to destabilize China by using Taiwan as a tool. China firmly opposes any form of official exchanges between the U.S. and Taiwan. The U.S. congressman should abide by the One China principle pursued by the U.S. government. The U.S. side should follow the One China principle and the Three China-U.S. joint communiques stop official contact with Taiwan and avoid going further down the erroneous path. China will continue to take firm and strong measures to resolutely safeguard its sovereignty and territorial integrity. We have more news coming up after one final short break. Please stay with us. Hi, and welcome back. On Thursday, the death toll from South Africa's floods rose to 341 as helicopters fanned out across the southeastern city of Durban searching for survivors. With roads and bridges washed away by the rainfall, rescuers battled to deliver supplies across the city, where some residents are without power or water since Monday. 
The air support was pulled from military and police helicopters, but also a fleet of volunteers, private contractors, and schools. The government did not give any indication of how many people are missing. City officials predicted that the bill for damage will run into billions of rands. But the, the devastation is quite vast. I mean, every single little stream or tributary turned out into a raging river. There's a lot of houses that have collapsed, a lot of buildings that have been washed away. Um, the community is affected in a massive way. I think it's going to take... I've been working in search and rescue for almost 20 years. I am a Natal boy, so I'm from here, and this is the worst disaster that I've seen hit Natal in, in, in 20 years. The death toll from landslides and floodings in Philippines triggered by Tropical Storm Maggie continued rising to 148 on Thursday, official figures showed. Scores of people are still missing and feared dead after the strongest storm to strike the archipelago nation this year dumped heavy rain over several days, forcing tens of thousands into evacuation centers. Most of those deaths were in Pilar, with at least 28 bodies brought by boat to a sandy lot near the municipal government building after roads leading to the settlement were cut off by landslides. Bad weather and thick mud had complicated retrieval efforts in Pilar, where the ground was unstable. Searchers were also combining the coastline after some bodies were swept kilometers away by ocean currents. Kenya warns oil marketers in the country against attempts to sabotage its economy. This comes a day after the general manager in East Africa, French fuel supplier Hobies, was expelled from the country following days of fuel shortage that have created long lines of waiting at fuel service stations. Any entity that is not ready, that is not able, that is not willing to work within the framework of the laws of Kenya is invited to vacate this market promptly, said Monica Juma, Kenya's cabinet secretary for energy and petroleum, while at a press conference in Nairobi. Decided as government that this is not an acceptable situation and that Kenyans should not be subjected to a situation that we are facing today. In fact, in my mind, this situation can only be equated to deliberate efforts to sabotage this economy, which constitutes a capital crime in our statute books. One, that this government will not tolerate any entity or person that is causing distress, either by creating an artificial problem or stress. Opposition politicians and human rights defenders on Thursday condemned the British government for striking a deal with Rwanda to send some asylum seekers to the African country. Media reports say the government's plan would see some single men who arrive in Britain from across the English Channel in small boats flown 4,000 miles to Rwanda while their asylum claims are being processed. Labour Party lawmaker Lucy Powell told Sky News that the British government's move was not about tackling the small boats issue, but rather an attempt to tackle the government's own sinking boat. Migrants have long used in northern France as a launching point to reach Britain since the coronavirus pandemic shut down other routes in 2020. More than 20,000 people entered the United Kingdom on small boats last year, up from 8,500 in 2020. Dozens have died, including 27 people in the November capsizing of a single boat. Countries in North America and Europe are grappling with the worst inflation in decades as global energy prices are hiking amid the ongoing crisis in Ukraine and Russia's special military operation. Contract prices for renewable energy soared 28.5% in North America and 27.5% in Europe in the past year, according to a new report published Wednesday by Level 10 Energy, the operator of the world's largest power purchase agreement marketplace. Energy prices in the first quarter alone grew by 9.7% in North America and 8.6% in the old continent, the report said. According to a Reuters analysis, the economic, logistical and labor market disruptions during the COVID-19 pandemic have worsened since the outbreak of the Russia-Ukrainian conflict, reversing a decade of cost declines for green and renewable energies. Well, with that, we've come to the end of this news brief. Remember, you can find these and many other stories on our website at Tell Us English. You can also join us on social media for all the latest news. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Telegram. For Tell Us English, I am Dio Martin. Thank you for watching.